So in the numerator, we have a denominator of 3, we have a denominator of 6. They need a common denominator. Well, that would be 6. So we multiply the first one, top and bottom, by 2. So we've got 4, 6 plus 5, 6 on the top. On the bottom, they need a denominator of 4, common denominator of 4. So we're multiplying by 2 on that one as well. So we've got 2 fourths minus 1 fourth. So on the top, we have 9 sixths. On the bottom, we have 1 fourth. Dividing by a fraction, yes, we flip the bottom one over and it becomes multiplication. Okay, that was dividing rational expressions. And then we simplify. So I would look at 4 over 6 reducing to 2 over 3, so that would be 18 over 3. All right, now, it actually turns out that there is an easier way to do this. Okay, there is an easier way to do this. So let me go ahead and show you that because that's really the mindset that we're going to use uh, going into today. <clears throat> into today. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I'm going to rewrite it. All right. This time, though, instead of getting a common denominator on the top and a common denominator on the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all of the denominators together and say, what would be my least common denominator between 3, 6, 2, and 4? 12. Okay. So I'm going to go through, and I'm not going to get the common denominator of 12, what I'm going to go through and do is I'm just going to multiply each of these numerators only by 12. Now I can do that because if I multiply both of these by 12, technically I would have a 12 factored out front, and I multiply both of these by 12, I have a 12 in front, 12 over 12, I didn't actually change the common. Right? So because all still within the rules of mathematics. Okay, then I'm going to simplify each of, them, each of them individually. 12 over 3 reduces to 4. So really I've got 2 times 4, which is 8. 12 over 6 reduces to 2, so I've got 5 times 2, which is 10. There was a plus right there in between those. On the bottom, 12 over 2 reduces to 6. 6 times 1 is 6, minus... 12 over 4 reduces to 3, and I get 18 over 3. Yes, sir? No, what I was doing there was I was getting Trust me, it's going to make things easier, especially when we throw variables in there. Okay, so we are going to simplify complex fractions. <clears throat> complex fractions just really means that it is a rational expression or expressions divided by one or more of the rational expressions. So this is a very simple example of a complex fraction. But pretty much a complex fraction is any time a fraction is within a bigger fraction. Our steps, kind of what I just outlined a second ago, um, but it's very simple. Okay, you want to factor everything possible. Find the LCD. You want to factor as much as possible because a lot of times there's overlap between your denominators. There's some overlap. It will save you a lot of trouble later on if you factor everything completely to start with. You won't have quite so much simplifying to do. Then you multiply each rational expression by the least common denominator, but you're only multiplying the numerator because you want to cancel some stuff out. You'll 
cancel those common factors and then you simplify. A couple of things that I want to mention to begin with. There are three rational expressions in this complex fraction. X plus 3, this one right here, x plus 3 over x, and 4x over x plus 3. Three different complex fractions, or excuse me, three different rational expressions within our complex fraction. Okay? We cannot cancel these x plus 3s that are in the big denominator because one of them is in the numerator, one of them is in the denominator, and they are separated by subtraction. We cannot cancel those. We cannot cancel this, the x plus 3 at the top and the x plus 3 here at the bottom. Again, because of that subtraction in the denominator. So there's nothing we can simplify right now. There's also nothing that we can factor. So all we need to do is analyze our three denominators. And you may say, well, Ms. Redmond, I only see two denominators. That is true, but remember, we can turn anything into a fraction by putting it over one. So that numerator that doesn't have its own denominator, just think of it as being over one, all right? So our LCD here is going to be the X times X plus three. Again, remember back to yesterday, that single x does not count as overlap with the x plus 3. The x plus 3 is a linear term. The x is a monomial. Okay? So we are going to go through and we are going to multiply each of these rational expressions by x times x plus 3. In some cases, some stuff's going to cancel. In other cases, it is not. But the point is, after we do this, we're going to have just one single fraction. There isn't going to be any more fraction within a fraction. Okay, because that numerator, well, there's nothing that simplifies there. There's no denominator to cancel. Um, so it's just x times x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, nothing canceled there. But looking at the denominator, look at that first rational expression. This x and the denominator, we can cancel those. So we've got x plus 3 times x plus 3. It's the only thing that's left there. Don't lose that minus sign right there. And for the second one, the x plus 3 in the numerator and the denominator cancel. So we're left with 4x times x. Now, for the sake of just keeping everything straight, I didn't multiply anything out yet. You to see that all my little denominators are gone now. That was the purpose. Now we can proceed with simplifying. Please, please, please do not cancel these x plus 3s. Okay, you can't. Because of this minus right here, you cannot simplify those. If that was times 4x squared, then yes, you certainly could. But because of that minus right here, you cannot cancel those things. We are going to have to uh, multiply. <clears throat> excuse me, multiply the denominator out. Uh, now, I'm actually going to leave that numerator in factored form because there was no um, adding or subtracting, separating these terms, okay, because later on down the road, if anything else is going to cancel, I'm going to need that numerator in factored form, so I might as well leave it that way, right? So the denominator, when we multiply that out, we need to FOIL x plus 3 times x plus 3, so we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then that is minus 4x squared. 4x times x is 4x squared. Okay. Still leaving that numerator in factored form. I want to simplify the denominator. Well, first of all, I need to combine the x squared minus 4x squared. So that's negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 9. I can factor. First of all, there's a GCF. There's a GCF of negative 3. Remember, if the leading coefficient is negative, we need to factor out a negative. <clears throat> so when we take out a negative 3, we are left with x squared minus 2x minus 3. And that trinomial 
will factor x minus 3 times x plus 1. So it turns out that nothing ends up canceling in the ends. This is where you've got to be careful with your factoring. So that is your final answer. Sometimes it cancels, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do one that has four. Four rationals.